This program is brought to you by UCKG. It's happening in every neighborhood. Down every street. Sickness. Addiction. And violence has been turning countless homes into crime scenes. Suffering. Depressed. Alone. Suicidal. Welcome to your program, Problems and Solutions. A very good evening. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's always a pleasure to be able to enter in your house, in your work, where you are right now, through this program here on Opta Canal, either on our uh, social media, Facebook page or YouTube page. We are here tonight with all of our faith to pass to you, my dear friend, what God has been giving us. You know that God is a God of miracles. And miracles are not something of the past, because God is the same of yesterday, today, and forever. Which means that God is still performing miracles in our days. Miracles of healing. And this is how many people have been arriving here at the Universal Church with health problems, with spiritual problems, Many of them with problems that were impossible, but through the power of faith, they were able to overcome. And the greatest of all miracles, that is the miracle of the Holy Spirit, the healing of the soul. And I want to introduce you today this story, and I want to invite you for you to stop everything that you are doing and watch this wonderful story and see how the life of this person was and how the life is today. In the meantime, you want our help, you know that below your screen you can find our telephone number, also our Facebook page. If you are watching us, you can send us your request on our messenger, or you can call us or you can text us. This is your program, Problems and Solutions. But the most important thing I would say was using, learning how to use my faith has helped me a lot. Learning how to use my faith and use the weapons of faith is what has kind of changed my life and helped me to move forward. Today, I never expected how my life is. My life is moving forward, I'm in a good job, and I'm progressing there, I'm ahead for where my age is. And I'm able, more importantly, to help other young people who went through issues that I went through today. I'm saying this to you now because what I used to be and how I was before was completely different. I was somebody who was depressed, very sad, lonely. I didn't really have much relationship with my parents, even though I lived with my mom. We were like strangers to each other. We didn't spend any time. Our relationship was very bad, toxic. I was a bad example to my family, aggressive. I was addicted as well. Inside, I was very bitter, insecure. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe that I could move forward. I was somebody who was very close, confused about where my head was at, where my sexuality was. And I didn't believe in myself or have any Confidence. The way I found out about the Universal Church, I'll never forget, we was actually um, evangelised by an assistant, my mum and I, and that's how I, I found out about the church. And in regards to what it means to me, it means to me hope. That's what I would say in one word because it's where I found my hope and where I found purpose for life today. I would say what it means to be universal is to be accepting. We include everybody. And I say more importantly, to give people an opportunity because sometimes people have given up on life, but for them to know that there's opportunity, there is hope. I was learning bit by bit how to use my faith and especially my individual faith, not relying on other people. So whether it be like praying, reading the Bible, whatever it means, for example, especially in order to receive the Holy Spirit, I had to learn to use my own faith. I had to believe because sometimes that can be a hard thing to believe in, using your faith, like can I actually achieve something great? And it came to me just literally investing in my faith, learning about God for myself, investing in my relationship with God. When I saw that the biggest changes with myself was within like nine, seven months when I realized that I kind of had changed. There were certain things that I was doing before that I stopped doing that I never thought I could overcome addictions. So then I started to see like slowly and surely by using my faith, things were moving forward. 
today I'm able to help others, something I wasn't able to do before because I was somebody who needed the help, to be very honest with you. And today I'm able to help others, speak to other young people, those in my church, I help out with different groups, the youth group, the food bank, CBC, and just like helping people to understand that you can change your life and it's literally down to you making a decision. Because I received the most important thing, I was able to now give to others. The main changes and the things that I would say I conquered was that I'm able now to say I'm free from depression, I sleep well. I'm not somebody who's sad all the time or down. I'm not someone who's insecure, while once I was before, I'm someone who believes in themselves. I'm now somebody who like has a future, like knows where I'm going. It's not someone who's just like, just there, but has a vision, believes in themselves, knows where they're heading. There's definitely no regrets about becoming part of the universe at church because it's really helped me a lot and I wouldn't be who I am today without it. My lifestyle before coming to the church was quite a reckless one. I, was, I used to go out clubbing every night. I used to lie in bed most of the day. I wasn't working and I hadn't worked for about 15 years. Um, I didn't have any goals or any, any ambition in life. I didn't really know where I was going. I wasn't going anywhere. So my addiction started when I was about 13, 14, when I started smoking at school. My friend introduced me to cigarettes and because I was such a depressed teenager, I just took it on and we used to spend our dinner money on cigarettes and we used to go and smoke in the, um, there was a park near my school. We used to go and smoke in the park and we used to get through, I think, a packet of 20 cigarettes a day between us. That was at the age of 13, 14. And that continued um, and I smoked on and off until I was about 30, 35. I carried on smoking for about a good 20 years. And then um, later on, uh, when I stopped smoking, um, I became addicted to clubbing. I used to go out practically every single night, if not seven nights a week, then at least six nights a week. I used to go out clubbing because I was addicted to dancing. When I was on the dance floor, I felt really happy. I felt like a buzz and excitement, which I didn't have the rest of the time. So I would be in nightclubs every single night. Um, my addiction was triggered by, a, well, there was a loneliness in my heart. And what happened was um, I decided to join an evening class for Latin American dancing, salsa, merengue. And when I learned, I just went to the club to see how it was. And from the time I went there, I loved the buzz, I loved the excitement. So I just started going every single night. I just became addicted. There was a lot of people addicted like me and we would just go from one club to the other every single night. There wasn't a night, if, you know, maybe there was one night in the week I didn't go out, but then I would just feel depressed and I'd just wait for the following night. I'd go about 12, 11, 12, and I'd come home about four, five o'clock in the morning. My lowest point was when I stood on the edge of King's Cross Underground Station and I really wanted to jump in the underground because I was just feeling so low, so depressed. Because I'd, I'd met someone at the nightclub and he'd kind of like ditched me and I just couldn't carry on. I just didn't know what to do with my life. And it was like, you know, I couldn't get that buzz, that excitement. It was like, no matter what I did, um, I just wanted to kill myself. I didn't want to carry on living anymore. That was really my lowest, lowest point. When I came to the help centre, um, after a few sessions, like in the beginning, I was still going out. I was going to a nightclub. I thought everything was fine. And then one of the advisors said to me that I shouldn't be going to the nightclub. I can't really mix the two. But for me, it was really difficult to stop because that was the life I'd made for myself. I couldn't just stop and, you know, just stop going there. So what I would do, I would come dressed in shorts or a mini skirt and I'd have a long um, raincoat over the top and I'd take part in the service. And then the minute the service ended on the way home, I'd stop off and I'd go to the clubs in central London and then in the morning I'd go back home. So I carried on for quite a few months because I didn't have the strength to stop. I couldn't, I couldn't stop because I enjoyed both. I enjoyed coming for the meetings to the church, but I also enjoyed my clubbing and my nightlife outside. So I didn't want to trade one for the other. So I just carried on. I've been free from this addiction. It must be about 16 years now. I don't go to clubs anymore, I'm not addicted anymore to dancing or anything like that. But it was so crazy because in the beginning, I'll never forget that I came for a meeting for a church service and um, during the offering they gave me a free Bible 
And I remember I was so happy to receive this Bible and I put it in my pocket in my raincoat and I went to the nightclub and I lost it in the nightclub. So the following morning I rang the nightclub and I said to them, you know, have you found my Bible? I lost a Bible in the nightclub. And they just said to me, we don't do Bibles. And they put the phone down on me. I think they were quite, you know, annoyed that I would even bring a Bible in the nightclub. But um, that's how bad the addiction was. And I remember feeling really, really upset that I lost this brand new Bible that I was given as a gift. So, but I just couldn't stop, you know, I couldn't balance it. But now, thank God, I'm free. I'm completely free. If anyone's in my situation, I would say to them, you can be free from your addiction. But obviously it's a process, but the first thing is you have to want to be free. You have to want it in your mind, because when I finally made a decision that I didn't want this way of life, then, you know, obviously I asked God for strength to help me, and he helped me, and I was able to cut the dancing, I was able to cut the smoking, because the smoking I would smoke on and off. I was able to cut everything because God gave me the strength to be able to do what I couldn't do on my own. So, you know, anybody who's in my situation, don't give up on yourself. There is help available. You can be free. You can have a happy life. Because before I wasn't happy, even though I smoked, even though I danced, even though I went clubbing, I was not happy. I was the most miserable person. I would wake up in the morning and I would cry, cry, cry. I would go to bed crying, but now I don't have any addictions. I don't rely on anything to make me happy. And now I'm happy on my own. I am Ashken and that was my story. The only one that could transform these lives were God. Was God. Nobody else. No one else. It's impossible for man. You know, it's impossible for man to do what only God can do. This is the type of people that has been arrived at the Universal Church with problems that, human speaking, are impossible. But through the power of faith, becomes the problems that were impossible becomes possible. The same way that the lives of these people change, your life can change as well. Lift up your face and take a decision of giving a step of faith. And through that step of faith, surely that doors will be open and things are going to change in your life. We are here in Stockholm, in our headquarters. Also, we have our special work of Stop Suffering either in Yotabori, also in Malmo. But if you are watching me in any place of Sweden, any part of Sweden, you can call us, you can text us, you can know more about the Universal Church through our website, www.ucgg.se. Also, if you are watching me in Norway, we have also our, our special work there in Norway. And uh, here in Stockholm, we are at the Birgias Gotten 106. Tomorrow is a day that we treat about the soul, that we speak about the soul and we treat about the soul. Every day at the Universal Church, we have different types of prayers. Wednesday, especially for the healing of the soul. If you want, join us. You are welcome to join us at 7 p.m. in our main service. Also, any day you can come and visit us. Or if you just want to pass by and talk to someone, we have all our doors open every day from 9 in the morning until 8.30 in the evening. Depends on you to grab your opportunity and give your step of faith. Tomorrow we're going to be back with another program, Problems and Solutions. Have a good night. May God bless you. I'm not leaving this hospital until I know what's wrong with my daughter. If you want out, that's fine with me. This program is brought to you by UCKG.